in this next video or series of videos, uh, what I want to do is I want to model a cup from uh, several different points of views. Now, the reason why I want to do that is because there is no one perfect way to model anything. So I want to model the same object using different tools and showing you guys that really um, the way you go about modeling anything is not, um, you know, whether this is the perfect way to do it. It's just I'm using whatever is available to me. So if I started modeling something a certain way, then I'm just going to go ahead and just uh, continue modeling that object using uh, the methods that make sense at the time. So first of all, uh, I've modified my interface a little bit. I've you know been playing around and I've actually lost the uh, cylinder tool in the toolbar. So you know what, I'm just going to go down into geometry. I'm going to go to primitives and I'm going to go to cylinder. Now I could technically just go to unit primitives and create a cylinder and this will give me a nice clean cylinder to start. And this is perfect. Um, you know, this this will actually do. So geometry, unit primitives, and uh, cylinder. So this will give me a nice cylinder that uh, that I can work with. Now the reason why I say I can work with this is because if I go to the top view, so press the uh, perspective button and then go to top. Um, the one thing that I like about the cylinder is the fact that there is one vertex here, one vertex here, one here, and one here. Now why do I like that? Um, oh yeah, but by the way, if you can't see the vertices, make sure you click this middle button here, go down to visibility options and turn on vertices. Now, why do I like the way this uh, cylinder has been laid out? Well, the reason why I like it is because if I was to divide this object, and this is just going to be an example, so you don't have to do this. Is if I was going to divide this object into four, so remember, don't do this, but uh, I'm just going to give you an example. Yeah, so basically, if I was just going to divide this object into four pieces, um, well, actually, these vertices basically let me do that. So just because I have one at each quadrant, I'm able to divide this object into four pieces. And what this allows me to do is delete all this other geometry, and I can work on just one piece if I wanted to. I can work on one piece, and then I could uh, mirror it over and then mirror this half over to there. So that way I could get a perfectly symmetrical model. If I have anything complex that's modeled on this one side, I can mirror it over to the other sides. Now, this is just a cup that I'm going to be modeling, so I don't need to do this. But usually when I model complex objects, that is what I do. So now I'm just going to right click and drag in my viewport, select all these edges like that, press L, and then press backspace. So that will get rid of all those extra edges for me because I don't need them right now. And you know what? I'm just going to go into my front view. So you can go to front view from here. So front view, I'm going to middle click across. Again, if you don't have a, a square or a rectangular selection, and in, in case you want it, you just have to go to select, lasso style, and rectangle. So I'm just going to go ahead and move that up and of course I'm using the W button to for the move tool. So I'm middle clicking across, I'm pressing W and then I'm clicking the handle to move things up and down. Okay, so we have our basic shape for the cup. Next up what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to bevel inwards and create the hollow part for this cup. So I'm just going to select the top polygon and I'm going to use the bevel tool, so I'll bevel or the button B and I'm going to click on this red handle and I'm going to bevel inwards. Now right now I actually have a profile selected by mistake so I'm just going to minimize the profile. I'm going to expand the bevel options and I'm just going to bevel until I get something like this and then I'm going to press Q and you can go into bevel again and then extrude inwards using the blue handle. Now when you're extruding inwards, it really probably is a good idea to view your object from the side until you get something like that because you really do need to make sure that your cup is volumetric. So don't go all the way down here because that doesn't make sense. You know, go a little bit further up because there really needs to be material at the bottom to keep this thing, uh, this whole thing solid. So I'm going to drop that again and just execute another bevel tool. And then once this tool is active, I can press middle click 
to create another one and then another one by pressing middle click again. And this time I can just go ahead and scale it down until it reaches pretty much zero. And once I have reached zero, you know what, I'm just going to zoom in close to my uh, bevel here. I'm going to drop my tool and now I'm going to go into vertex, merge, and I'm just going to click in my viewport and I'm just going to hold left click and I'm going to drag to the right until all these vertices merge. Now there's another way to do this, but I just thought I'd use the merge tool. Now the other way to do this is if I undid this and I selected that polygon again, uh, what I would do is I would just go to vertex and if I just expand this, you could go to join averaged and all those vertices have been joined and there's only one vertex now if you look over here. So zoom out. So that's uh, perfect right there. And now we're just going to go back into polygon selection, select the bottom. You can go to polygon mode, uh, you know, polygon over here or mesh edit or basic. As long as you have access to the bevel tool or the B hotkey, you can choose the bevel tool and extrude a little bit out, press middle click, use the red one to shrink a little bit, press middle click again to repeat and then shrink the selection and then middle click, point out a little bit, middle click, point out a little bit more, middle click, point out and to get something like that. Again, middle click, move up like that, middle click, out, middle click again, middle click, and I'm just constantly repeating those actions until I get something like that. And all I'm doing in the last one is I'm just shrinking it. And it doesn't matter if I go over, as long as it's close, I can what I can do now is I can just drop uh, pressing Q. And then I'm just going to go back into vertex and join averaged. And then set tells me that 24 vertices have been joined. I can press OK. And now I know that this is just one vertex over there. Now, when I look at this model, one thing that you have to know is that I have these two edges that are pretty close, actually these three edges here. These two edges are close and same thing over here. Now the reason why I did that is because if I now go ahead and press tab on my keyboard and I'm just going to turn off my vert, uh, edges, so I'm just going to go to shade options, wireframe, none, and I'm also going to go into here and show vertices off. What you'll notice is that there is a slightly sharper angle over in this part of the model. That is why I decided to have more edges along the corners like that. So if I press tab, I go in and out, you'll notice that the shape remains. If I was to go to and do something like that, and if I, now, if I now press tab, you'll notice that this is a much softer edge. So if I do something like this, where I just Go into loop slice as an example. If I add more geometry here, you'll notice that if I move this edge closer to there, it gets sharper. If I move it away, it gets softer, but now this one gets sharper. So the more geometry I have at the corners, the sharper the geometry is going to become. So the bottom of the cup is uh, done. Now I have to unsubdivide my model, so press tab again, or geometry toggle subdivision. And let's uh, handle the top of the cup. So let's go ahead and select one of these edges here, doesn't matter which one, press Alt L to, se to select the entire ring, and then go into mesh edit, go to loop slice or Alt C, and then left click or just click on here, and then click in the viewport and you should get something like this. So as you're left clicking and moving the edge, just put it to 50%. So make sure that the slider here is set at 50%. And then you can drop the tool or you can do uh, one more thing. Basically, you have two options. You can create this uh, one edge as I've made it now. You can 
press Q to drop, and then go to Bevel, and split that edge into two or three edges. If I just go to around level zero, you'll notice that what I've done is I've split that edge into two, and that will create a sharper edge. Or if I just go ahead and undo, what I could have done is if I use loop slice once again, I could have made, I could have gone into the property panel here. I could have selected count two, as you can see here, and I could have moved those edges on my own. And if I go to 10% and 90%, I know that those edges are evenly split, and then I can drop the tool now. So there's multiple ways of handling that situation. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add more edges right along here. So I'm just going to select one edge, press Alt L, or you can go to select, uh, where is it? Uh, select ring, so Alt L right here. Now, once you have that selected, once again, loop slice, and you can move this edge closer to the top and the bottom edge closer to the bottom. Now this one, I'm actually not going to move so close to the bottom. I actually want some curvature at the bottom here. So you know what, I'm just going to delete that edge by pressing backspace. I'm going to double click on this edge here. And now I'm going to press R to get me into scale. And I'm going to select this bottom. I'm going to select the center or I could just select the uh, green circle in this case to scale down a little bit. And again, um, if you paid attention to the subdivision uh, surfaces uh, chapter, you'll know that because I have these edges uh, this, this far away from each other, there's going to be a nice curved transition between these edges here. There's also going to be a nice curved transition between these edges, but considering they are closer, there's going to be a, little, a much smaller curvature here than, for example, between these edges. Now if I press tab, you'll notice that, in fact, there is a little bit more of a curvature here than here. This corner almost seems a lot sharper as a result. Now, if I was going to do something like this, you'll have noticed that, you know, you have a nice sharp angle here, but this angle is a lot less sharp. Now, I'm not sure if I want this much of a sharp angle. I might actually want to soften it down just a tiny bit. And I could also do the same thing here. Just a tiny bit. And then I can add more edges along here. So Alt L, loop slice, and you know what? I'm going to go to count one. So go into the property, count one. And again, loop slice is under mesh edit or Alt C. Try to remember the hotkeys that I'm using. You know, whenever you're searching for the tools, just try to remember the hotkeys because it is really important that you get access to them very quickly. Okay, so we have the major portion of this cup finished. The next thing that we need to do is we need to work on the overall shape of the uh, handle here. So we're going to model the ear part. Now, when I model the ear part, what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to go to one of the major view views. So if I press, uh, if I go into perspective, and or in that perspective, but I if I click on this button and I go to either uh, back or front or right, I want to be able to model my, you know, the ear, uh, you know, handle on this uh, on this cup, but. If I model it from here, that means I want one of the polygons to in the center where I'm going to be modeling from for there to be a, a polygon in the center. Now, right now, if we go back and go into the top view, you'll notice that there is no one polygon in the center. Well, uh, there's two ways that I could do this. Now, I could, what I could do is I could either just work off two polygons and make the ear or I could just make it off one of them and model the ear. Now, in this case, you know what? I'm just actually going to go by two, but normally what I would do is um, if there was less, uh, fewer segments like this, if I was going to just delete every second segment, for example, like this, and I'm just double clicking to do this. Um, if I was going to have a shape like this, then what I could have done is I could have selected, double clicked on this, 
and I could have rotated it so that the you know just more or less until the normals are pointing to each quadrant and the nice thing is now that I have one nice thick polygon that I could work off of and you know what and I think that's what I'm gonna do but uh, before I go ahead and uh, work on that I uh, you might have noticed there's some dirty shapes in here this wireframe is not very clean let me just get out of smooth mode so I'm just going to press tab to get out of there you'll notice that you know I have these leftover vertices all you have to do is just select these vertices so what I've done is I've selected the first one I've held shift I've selected the second one and then I pressed up 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 and now I'm going to press backspace I can do the same thing at the bottom select the first one select the next one up 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 on your keyboard and then press backspace now I know that I'm you know taking a long time to model is uh, a very simple cup but you know I want to show you some stuff that uh, you know you might have not been aware of so you know it's going to take a little bit longer than a, you know a general really quick you know how to model a cup because this isn't really about how to model a cup but uh, it's about learning how to model to begin with and I think there's uh, definitely a few important lessons to be learned so all I'm doing now is I'm just splitting a few more times now the reason why I'm splitting more uh, you know this cup in particular is because what I'm going to want to do and all I'm doing is I'm just middle clicking I mean I'm left clicking double clicking and then I'm pressing and holding shift and double clicking on more edges so if I do something like this then I can press W to move so I'm just moving these edges up and what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to take these two polygons and I'm going to want to make the ear out of these two polygons here so I'm just going to t select these two and I'm going to press uh, and ho or I'm basically going to use the bevel tool I'm going to click in the viewport and I'm going to extrude out I'm also going to shrink this extrusion a little bit like that and now I can select every one of these you know just move this one up move this one down and at the same time I could go ahead and just go into the rotate tool so I pressed E rotate just slightly and rotate just slightly like that I'm going to go back into the bevel tool and I will be adjusting this later but for now I just want to make sure that I have what it is that I'm looking after. I'm just going to into bevel again, rotating, moving, bevel again, rotate, move. And again, bevel is B, move is W. And once I get something like this, what I can do is I can select these last two polygons and I can go into duplicate bridge or polygon bridge and basic bridge so it exists in a few places anyways if you go down to polygon it makes sense I'm I am in polygon selection I can select bridge and then I can left click in my viewport and if I hold left click and drag in the viewport I can get several uh, you know I can choose the transition between uh, you know the two polygons that I wanted to connect uh, this is actually not too bad I'm going to look I'm going to go into the properties pane over here and I'm going to adjust the, ten the uh, tension to make it less circular and I think that's fine and I'm just going to go ahead and just press Q to drop the selection so now we have the overall ear but the next thing I want to do is I want to make sure that I move these inside uh, inner vertices to give me a kind of a thinner ear like right now it's a little bit too blocky too thick it's going to be difficult to put in uh, you know too many fingers I think only like one or two fingers will fit in there and that's not enough usually you want at least uh, th three fingers to be able to fit in there I'm going to go into one of my views so in this case I'm going to go into my right view so I just click here choose right and then I'm going to be using the middle click and dragging across press W and you can move the vertices up so middle click W middle click W again the reason why we're using middle click 
is because I want to select through. If I just use left click, well, I guess left click works in this case too. But generally, ah, oh, see, I just use left click here, and I only selected the front uh, vertex and not the one in the back. If I undo that uh, by pressing Control Z, um, and I middle click, you'll now notice in my viewport it says two vertices. If I left click, it says one. If I middle click, it says two. And that's because there's a vertex behind that one, and I want to select both of them. So middle click across, press W, and move. Middle click once again, and you know just work it like that. And here I'm just going to move this stuff closer. I'm going to reshape some of the stuff like that. And I'm trying to make sure that the distance between this and that is more or less the same all the way throughout. So you just have to readjust that, make sure that this object works. Like that. So I'm just going to zoom out, look at this object, and you know what? I still don't like it too much. I think there's still some things that are wrong. But again, I can just easily readjust that. Okay, so that's pretty much done. I'm going to go into the right button here, press perspective, and look at the model from the perspective view. And now that I'm done with that, I'm going to press tab, and then I'm going to go into here, shade options, wireframe none, and I'm also going to make sure that my vertices are off. So visibility, show vertices off. So looking at this cup, it looks nice and pretty. And uh, yeah, so that's basically one way of modeling a cup. Now there's many other ways. And I'm going to show you one other way to create it. And I'm going to sh also show you several ways to create this uh, ear portion of the, uh, of the cup. And again, there's a bunch of ways that you could go about doing that. There's no one perfect way of modeling anything. So until next chapter two.